Hi, this is Colin Richardson from Cary, North Carolina. For my global project, I brought students from my public high school in North Carolina together with students from a private international school in Turkey. And both sets of students looked at and decided what they thought the most important social issue facing them uh, in the world today is. And they looked at that from a local, national, and then global framework. And by bringing together students from all over the world, we were able to really uh, broaden their perspectives on these issues. It was really exciting. We were excited from the beginning. And to demonstrate that, here's my colleague from Turkey. I'm, I'm curious to see what my students have to say and what your students have to say, because I was growing up in American schools, but now I'm teaching in uh, an international school. That's kind of, I just kind of wonder, like, what, what's the gray area or what's the overlap and the differences and just I'm looking forward to seeing what everybody has to say. Okay, thank you very much. Everybody wave bye. Adios. Bye. bye. <laughs> okay, thanks Alec. And we were off. The other teacher and I matched up students and they immediately started thinking about how they can use uh, politics and economics and cultural analyses to understand these issues that were so important to them and that was really key. I wanted to emphasize student agency. Even as I designed this project, I wanted to really put students in a leadership role. Um, so I was advising, I was grounding their work in sociology, but uh, the, the real work here was being done by students. And they were using tons of technology to do that. They were using Skype as the primary way to communicate. They were using Google Docs to do a lot of planning and writing, Google Sheets, to uh, both plan and do some original data analyses, Google Slides to create their presentations, Gmail to communicate, uh, Google Scholar. So <laughs> suffice it to say, we owe a lot to Google for all this. Um, but as central as technology was to this collaboration, it also uh, had to be challenged, especially given the way that our students are sometimes considered digital natives who uh, understand everything about tech. Um, that intersects interestingly with my students who grow up in an area that has a lot of tech jobs, but that leads to perhaps some problematic views about the way the technology interacts with the world. We use, because it costs cheaper for us, we use like, um, we'll like employ people from like least developed countries, so it'd be cheaper for us to like pay them and stuff. Okay, so you talked about outsourcing. So I think economically, especially in North Carolina, in RTP, where we are right now, that's... Okay, so a lot to unpack there, but at the heart of it is this idea that technology is something that people in our community are using to hire people in, as the students said, developing countries, rather than as a uh, technology that allows people to learn from and communicate with each other. So lots of room for growth, and I think that that growth is evidenced by the reflections my students did at the end of their projects. Here are a couple of those. By thinking globally for this subject, I learned that some countries like Norway are very strict with how their political system and financing works, while some countries like Brazil are very loose with it, and in result, there's a differing amount of corruption in each country. So we learned how around the world there are different gender roles and gender norms. So traditionally economies in less developed nations, it's going to be a lot different compared to more developed nations like the U.S. So what we learn about our subject globally is that more religious countries are less accepting of other sexualities. This global project has been such a great opportunity. My students have grown in so many different ways and I've grown as well. Uh, just from logistics, my collaborator and I definitely agree that we need to plan twice as much time for every single part of this and planning five times as much time. That was really, really key. And even before my colleague and I eventually paired up, uh, just hours upon hours of trying to find a great partner. So I would definitely emphasize that. Um, but more than that, it's been really interesting to see the balance between creating fair and challenging expectations and balancing that with freedom, giving students agency. This is by far the best work that my students did all year. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that they were choosing something that was really important to them. And then beyond that, uh, pairing that agency with authenticity, that this was creating a real world product that was going to be shared not only with their teacher, but also with their peers. And more than that, with uh, their new colleagues from across the world. Pairing uh, the authenticity with agency was one huge lesson I'm gonna take from this and continue to grow as an educator. Thanks for the opportunity.